very much for this uh, very nice introduction and uh, let me just most cordially welcome all the participants and uh, I'd like to give you some insight from the chapters from the history of ID security. It's a kind of uh, a little uh, approach because it's a very interesting and complicated story. How did I uh, begin to work? My, I myself, Lajos, uh, was working with Chaba Krasnoy and in his blog he called me a kind of a paleolithical remnant, uh, but I've been dealing with this issue for 1,000 years, and I was thinking about the length of 1,000 years. In 1993, uh, I actually began to deal with it professionally, so, so this 1,000 years started in 93 and lasted till today. Before that, I also worked with uh, IT, and not only in the public domain, but uh, this IT security is as old as information technology, but, uh, uh, but it is not very old. Uh, computer science, data processing is not not very long because it, uh, it uh, start, was started in the 1950s. Uh, cryptography started later on, uh, mentioned by Istvan Sabo, cryptography started uh, one that it, it started much earlier uh, during the the uh, medieval and uh, and archaic times, uh, but uh, I the development of IT and cryptography uh, has strong correlation. Uh, in the beginning, it was there was. Uh, the, the security was a DOD problem, the Department of Defense. This is the, the military ministry of the United States. It was its uh, privilege. Why DOD? Uh, it was uh, the only who really cared and who had the money to, to uh, make people do individual research. Uh, uh, army uh, needed lots of computers and could pay for it. Um, I don't know if you remember that the first electronic uh, computer, why was it important to develop the first electronic computer uh, trajectories? They needed trajectories for, for uh, the gunmen, for uh, batteries. And uh, actually, uh, uh, trajectories were, were calculated for the large guns, uh, uh, long-range guns, and uh, hundreds of mathematicians calculated these long-range uh, guns' trajectories. But not only trajectories were calculated with it, but in the 1950s, the development of the hydrogen bomb uh, also required electronic computers, and later on, American strategic uh, air defense uh, system control systems appeared uh, with electronic computers, and uh, this is why sec the the problem of security uh, had arisen. In 1958, DoD uh, started an advanced research project uh, that was the ARPANET, which is a kind of predecessor of the present-day Internet. Uh, agency began to develop it uh, with the certain requirements, uh, storage, transfer, uh, should be highly reliable, uh, should cover the whole of the United States uh, geographic area. That was our planet. And it was so much military uh, related that uh, even in 80, 80 and 80, 81, uh, it was called DOD st standard for transmission control protocol. So ARPANET uh, was a standard within the DOD, and uh, this is how it moved into the public domain. And uh, DOD, uh, under the umbrella of DOD, different developments started in 1961. Compatible time sharing systems, CTS system, appeared on an IBM 709. 
uh, which made possible for many computer users to use the same system at the same time uh, in a time sharing uh, mode of operation. But it raised lots of problems uh, because on these systems, these were military systems, state systems, very well protected. All sort of uh, secret information were, mo were, were moving on these systems and uh, the, this kind of confidential information required uh, authentication earlier till it was only on paper then they had this, the method uh, the classified data they said that uh, limited uh, uh, confidential top secret and the persons were also authorized with a kind of uh, uh, certificate and those who had the proper certificate may had may have access to certain type of data. Everybody may have data. Different person may have data on the same computer system. So they started this uh, multi multiplex information and computing service. Multiplex is important because this is when ACL tables appeared for the first time. That was the first such system where there was a kind of rule for access and protection uh, with lots of other questions and the issues. And the DOD uh, took it so seriously that in 1967 uh, produced a special task force uh, with the participations of university and industrial engineers and uh, the Defense Science Board was created uh, to deal with uh, the hardware and software issues of IT security. This group uh, did its work and the Willis uh, Ware, Warren, who was the leader of the group, was uh, a highly professional person, a guru, uh, worked together with John von Neumann, who is of Hungarian origin, um, and with his leadership, and uh, on the basis of his notes, a report of Defense Science Board Task Force was created, of which I'd like to show you a diagram. This diagram uh, is maybe interesting to younger persons for, uh, from two aspects. This is how a computer system looked like at that time. There was something which was called processor or computer, uh, with all sort of communication lines and a kind of switching center, a telephone center, PDX was connected to it, uh, to a remote terminal. But this remote terminal is uh, not uh, uh, like a PC of today, but it was like an electromechanical typewriter, uh, which uh, really made noise, uh, wrote everything on paper. The data transfer speed was very high, 20 something characters in a second from uh, from this, from a minute it went up to faster regions, so that at that time was considered high speed. But at the same time, if you take a look at the point of threats appearing on this diagram, these threats existed already in 1970. More or less, they were the same kind of threat, uh, threats that we we have today. Yeah? But lots of new things appeared, uh, uh, such as, um, uh, for example, such uh, virus, malicious virus program uh, existed only in theory, but there was a theory for it. But they uh, talked uh, against uh, protection against radiation. And they had to take it seriously. They talked a lot about it. Uh, that's why they used Tempest. And in the 1960s, uh, the English Secret Service uh, uh, professional uh, uh, used the radiation of the French Embassy in London, the encrypting uh, 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 devices radiation. Uh, so they received a signal of this radiation and uh, they decoded and, and uh, uh, 
script and uh, and got the messages, the secret messages of the French uh, communication. Uh, so that already worked in the 1970s. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, confidentiality, and in 1973, Bell, Leonard, Padula, Lapla, Padula uh, produced a mathematical model for uh, a secure computer system. This is, is the first uh, discussion of the issue of confidentiality, uh, privacy, uh, with uh, very serious mathematical modeling and this uh, mathematical model hasn't been overwritten ever since when we speak about the issue of privacy and uh, confidentiality but there is a big problem with it uh, Hoffman who was a teacher at the University of California uh, was dealing with the security of computer system he was a kind of teacher who dealt with it in his classes in 1977 said that uh, the theory of Bell and Lapadul is very good, but its practical implementation is uh, not feasible, and it is still not feasible today. The theory uh, or the thesis is taught as some starting point, and we must use its practical sense, but uh, to translate it into computer languages, uh, well, nobody really have uh, been successful in it, or, or at least there is no publication about it. And then uh, there was further development. Uh, a similar model appeared uh, in 1975 by, by Bibo, Integrity Considerations for Secure Computer Systems, and also Landwehr uh, in 81. Mm, uh, came up with the former models for computer security, but the mathematical model of um, computer security. And this model is more or less valid uh, up to today. So, uh, at the beginning of the 1980s, uh, it has become accepted that uh, CIA, the CIA principle that confidentiality, integrity, and uh, and availability are the, the basic things that should be protected for computer systems. And uh, yeah, the, the DOD, uh, military, yeah, and they also appeared in the public domain in the civilian sphere. So much so that the Defense Ministry, the Defense Department of the U.S. in 83 decided that since they had lots of documents written on this topic and the ITSEC or Orange Book was published which gave recommendations regarding tests, procedures for secure systems and this was quite openly distributed. It was in the public domain as it said on the cover sheet because the Department of Defense realized that much as they were funding lots of research projects, it would be nice to have considerations for the procurement of secure IT systems, such as they were following with their other procurement processes. And they wanted these requirements developed. And then this developed into a series of publication called publications called the Rainbow Series. And the EU published its own ITSEC publication quite in line with this. A very interesting event occurred in 1988 in the history of IT security. That's when the first computer virus appeared and devastated the landscape. And 
There's a very interesting background to this because the official version says that over 6,000 computers crashed because of this. And these were Sunwax and all kinds of Unix-based machines rather than IBM PCs, as you might think today. So the full computer system of the US was down in a number of days, including departmental systems. So they were rendered useless by the virus. And an interesting point about this first operational virus, uh, which was, as a matter of fact, rather a worm than a, a true virus. Its designer, Robert Moyes, was a senior scientist of NSA. So he had a family interest in this business. He just demonstrated his know-how on the other side. And he was sentenced to 400 hours of public benefit work. And he was put on probation for three years. And he was also given a fine of $10,050. $10,000 is a nice round figure. I understand the sentence this far, but $50 may have been a procedural fee of the court. In any case, $10,050 was the size of the fine imposed on him. Starting 1990, IT security was removed from the powers of the Department of Defense. It became a, a concern for everybody, and it had wider implications because of the emergence and the propagation of the PC architecture and the Internet, e-commerce, cryptography. Encryption included the SSL and Cerberus system approaches and so on. So security became a growing concern for a, an ever wider public. New answers had to be provided. So as opposed to the orange book that was about logical defense, new publications appeared. Common criteria was one of these regarding the security of products and systems. British standard. 7799 was the first um, British answer, and the current standard was developed on that basis. Now, in Hungary until 1990, as opposed to the Anglo Saxon world, the Interior Ministry was responsible for security, and it was Division um, 3 slash 3, not the political police, but it rather was the task of 3 slash 5 dealing with the technical issues. It was the predecessor of what today is the National Security Service, and also some issues were within the competence of the intelligence division. And due to the classical uh, Stalinist approach of secrecy, it was them handling everything. And as opposed to the Western world, military uh, counter espionage also belonged to 3 slash 3, um, the division of the Interior Ministry, and they were quite tough on these challenges. They were very tough indeed. They published the decree in 81 on IT systems, secrecy, and property protection and fire protection. How serious were these rules? And today, I would say that it was a senseless uh, secrecy system. I was a professional soldier at the time, and I was the IT chief of a division of the military, and I was in charge of a data center, including computers produced by Hungary's Videoton and were available to anyone, such as BT, uh, VT20. 
version 8. But the computer manual, which didn't have any special information, it was just like a normal description of any other piece of machinery, but it was declared a secret. So if somebody wanted to read uh, such a secret document, they could walk out into the um, open world and find the same description in a factory and read it freely rather than go through all the hassle. Let's not get into the detail, the explanation of uh, why things were so, but it, that was the case. And based on the 1987 Act on Protection of Secrets in Computer Systems, the Central Statistical Office published uh, rules and policies on the preservation of service secrets. We still see examples of certain IT security uh, rules uh, that refer back to this old piece of legislation, including my favorite town, the city of Veresetyaz. The municipal department published their own rules with reference to this old act. And there's only one problem with this. The Central Statistical Office no longer had any competence after a while. And this decree was repealed in 2005. And yet there are some small guys who can still sell security policies on those grounds. And then the political changes occurred. In the Prime Minister's office, an interministerial committee was set up on information technology. And they also were very tough on IT security. In 94, they published a methodology handbook, recommendation number 8. And then in 96, recommendation number 12 was published on IT security requirements. And to this day, I take pride in this. We didn't have so much information at the time, but at BS 77, um, 2 9, our publication was on par with the British standard. And so it was our achievement, not only logical defense, but also administrative and policy based defense mechanisms were decried and uh, described. And then 1.0 version was uh, borrowed and lifted into recommendation number 16 of this uh, body. And lots of recommendations made their way into uh, this set of rules. Who were the first experts in this field? There weren't a lot of us. If we went to a conference, there were 30-something of us, and people we didn't know were probably the doormen or some technical staff. So it was a small circle. Let me highlight of the experts. And now this is a bit slower than I thought, but let me speed it up. Dr. George Pop is one person I'd like to highlight here, who was the IT security expert on the interministerial committee. He was in charge of IT security projects and actively contributed to their work. And he was the grandfather of these ideas. And there's all kinds of names of colleagues. This isn't a full list, so don't take offense if you believe you should be in the list and you are not. My memory is about to fail me, so these are the names that I managed to gather. And still, in the 90s, I think we had major achievements. We put major results on the table. Even if we didn't catch up with the, with the US, we caught up with the rest of Europe. So we started to emerge in the security field. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Without the mic, unfortunately, the interpreter could not hear what the question is.
Yes and no. That is the answer. We were way behind, lagging behind in many ways because secrecy was paramount in our case. And we were also lagging behind because IT systems in our case at the time weren't our own development. So they were the Comic Con single computer architecture. And the IBM 360, 370 was the basis of the single architecture. So it was just a, a, a plagiarism based on the IBM architecture. And that's why it was so strictly kept a secret. Because just imagine, ladies and gentlemen, what IBM would have had to say if they found out that the Comic-Con uh, system used a Polish remake of their IBM architecture. So that's why it was a top secret and heavily protected by division number three of the interior ministry. And to this very day, the details of what people were doing there um, are not in the public domain. So let me just say that, yes, we were lagging behind, but not in every way. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Again. Yes, that's a tower, that's an HP tower. Well, I know that I'm to ask a question, and the prize will be this tower. Who can tell me about the Tempest Anti-Radiation Group, which is uh, well known and much liked? When uh, did they begin to use the Tempest uh, Group, uh, which decade in the IT environment. 50s? Who said 50s? Yes, you win the prize. Yes, it was one of the earliest achievements that caught our attention. And let me add that radiation was very different from what it is today. Um, nowadays, we use solid state and all the systems at the time were based on electron tubes. And it wasn't like an office block full of computers. There was only one mainframe, but heavily guarded. In the military headquarters, at the data center uh, top, there was a very uh, intensive water-based shielding system so that uh, the radiation could not even be measured using a satellite.